The following lesson is linked to learning outcome 2, reading and viewing. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to demonstrate various reading and viewing strategies for comprehension and appreciation. Learners should be able to ask questions to make predictions, scan texts for supporting details, read or view according to purpose and task, and reread, review and revise to promote understanding. Hi there, we have come to the last lesson in our introduction to Shakespeare and I really hope you won't be intimidated again when confronted with the Bard's work. What I want us to focus on in this lesson is how to study Shakespeare's plays. By the end of this lesson you will be able to understand how Shakespeare's plays can be studied. Also, how to follow techniques to read a Shakespearean scene effectively. If you watch the lesson on theatre, you will know that the best way of enjoying a Shakespearean play is to watch it live in a theatre. If you ever have the opportunity to see a Shakespeare play being performed, be sure to take it. If you can't see a play at the theatre, then another alternative is to watch it on video. This isn't quite as good as watching a play in the theatre, but at least you will be able to see the characters act out the lines and you will be able to see really amazing costumes and scenery. Remember that the plays were written to be performed, not read. Let's start by looking at a five-step plan you can try when approaching any Shakespearean play that you may be studying at school. Firstly, read a complete plot synopsis. A synopsis is a summary. There are many plot summaries available, but many of them are just too brief to provide a detailed scene-by-scene -scene account of the events. They may be useful for getting a general overview, but you will need more detail than a one or two page synopsis will provide. Instead, Look for a synopsis that incorporates passages from the play directly into the discussion. Although you might not understand the passages at first, when you later read the play, you will know exactly what is happening in the story. Then, find an annotated copy of the work you need to study. Annotated means that notes and comments are added to the text. Look for a copy that has detailed annotations at the bottom of each page or on the page opposite Shakespeare's text. The annotations will help you to better understand Shakespeare's language and events from history or mythology that he has referred to. Then it's time for step three. Get comfortable and read through the play once. In this quick preliminary reading, you should focus on learning the meanings of difficult words. And as you read, you should start to become familiar with the personalities of the characters. At this stage, don't worry if you don't completely understand every word you read. The aim is to get a good feel for the play. Let's move on to step four. Watch a theatre production or video with your copy. You have to train yourself to visualize the characters and actions that are happening on stage. So try to see a theater production of the play. Alternatively, you could rent or borrow a video production of the play from your local library or video store. Make sure that it is as close to the original play as possible. Grab your copy of the play and read along with the video. Through the performances of the actors, the speeches will come to life for you and the passages you didn't understand before will become clear. And lastly, step five. Read the play again and concentrate on identifying the themes. By now, you should have a good understanding of the key passages. At this stage, you should concentrate on the themes represented in the play. It is time to ask yourself these questions. What are the main important events? 
which characters are involved in the subplot and how does the subplot relate to the main plot of the play? How do the characters relate to one another? What motivates the central characters? What does the play tell us about life and our ability to control our own destiny? Do not be discouraged if you must reread crucial passages several times. Even teachers often need to return to key lines. Each time you read a passage, you will gain a deeper understanding of the play as a whole. I would also recommend reading general commentaries on the play, especially if you need more ideas for essay topics. Let's summarize the steps. Read a complete plot synopsis. Find an annotated copy of the work you need to study. Then, get comfortable and read through the play once. Watch a theatre production or a video of the play. Lastly, read the play again and concentrate on identifying the themes. Now let's go into a bit more detail and focus on how to study a specific scene taken from the play. These techniques will ensure that you not only know what is going on in the scene, but also enjoy reading it. Reading a Shakespeare play is not like reading a novel. You can't expect to lie on your bed and read it once and still know exactly who is who and what is going on. Learning how to read a Shakespearean play effectively is useful for a number of reasons. Effective reading will enhance your understanding. It will help you to recall the plot and themes for tests and improve your literature essays. I'm going to take you through a number of steps to follow for effective reading. There isn't one winning formula, of course, but you will be able to adapt these techniques to suit your reading style. Here is the first step. Reading for understanding. As we've already discussed, reading a Shakespeare play is different to reading a novel or a magazine whilst lying on your bed. You have to make a conscious effort to focus your attention on what is written and what it means if you want to be able to fully understand the play. Here are some techniques for doing this. Read each theme at least once. Even if you don't understand every word, this will give you a good overview of the scene. It is also useful to read the part of the story that the scene covers from a version of the play that is written as a story. This will also help you to understand the plot and the characters before you decode the language. Record and define any new words or phrases you looked up during your reading. This is where an annotated copy of the text is particularly useful because they provide definitions and explanations right where you need them. Of course, there may be words that are not defined in this book, but you can look these up in a dictionary. When you do this, use a pencil to make notes of the words you have looked up or record them in a separate notebook. This will save you having to look them up later. Another technique that will help you to read with understanding is to summarize the scene. It is useful to make your own summary of the play and the best time to do this is as you complete each scene and it is still fresh in your mind. When it comes to exam time or when you are writing a literature essay, you will also be very grateful for well-kept notes as you will be able to remind yourself of significant events and important bits of dialogue that occurred in the scene without rereading the play to track them down. Here is another technique. Note any questions you may have about the scene. It is useful to jot down questions in the margin of the play as you read it or in a separate notebook. Shakespeare may have written the play in such a way to deliberately get you thinking and the answer may be revealed later in the play. If your question isn't answered later, you may have to do a bit of research or ask your teacher for help to solve the riddle. So, step one involves reading with understanding, but now it is time 
to discuss your findings with others as you discuss the scene. This is a great way to share ideas and see how different people interpret the play. If you kept notes of questions you had while reading the scene, ask your group if they know the answers. This is a good way of getting the discussion going. Once you have done this, you will be able to continue with the third step. Now you can start adding answers. Be sure to write down the answers to your questions because these will be useful for exam revision or when you are preparing to write a literature essay. Now that you have a good general understanding of the scene, it is time to read it again, but not quite in the same way. Now you can read for pleasure. You will find that as you read the scene again, it will not be as difficult as it appeared to be when you first read it. This is because by now you would have worked out the meanings of the difficult words and you would have discussed and made notes of the basic plot and dialogue. So this time when you read it, it will be for pleasure. As you reread the scene, you won't be so focused on the technical aspects and can rather pay more attention to enjoying the language and the cleverness of the plot. When you do this, you will find that you notice things that you didn't see the first time you read the scene. Be sure to record these observations and your personal reactions to the scene. The notes you are making now will be more personal and they will focus on detailed observations. You will find that they will be really useful in adding some of your own interpretations to literature essays. It would also be useful to discuss what you have noticed in the second reading with your study group. So this is the final step. Discuss the play. Now that you have a better understanding of the scene, discuss with your group how it fits into the play as a whole. What themes have been raised? What new insights have you gained about the characters? How has it complicated the plot? Be sure to make notes of what your group discussed, as you will find that this discussion will be even more involved than the previous one. You may even find that it raises more questions for you to consider. Of course, the techniques that we have talked about in this lesson would have to be adapted to suit your classroom situation. For today's task, we are going to put these techniques into action. Take a scene from the Shakespeare play that you are studying at school and read it using the steps we have learnt about in this lesson. Start by reading for understanding, then discuss the scene. Start adding answers and then read for pleasure. Now you can discuss the whole play. What I hope you have learned from this lesson is that the best way to read Shakespeare effectively is to be an active reader. Make notes, raise questions, have a discussion, look for definitions and answers. If you are working with a text, you will understand it much better. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.